Hello everyone, this is Chris Jamal at Exiton Interactive and this is going to be a short video where I migrate the ASP.NET Core 2.0 um, application that I created to version uh, 2.1 as there are several things that I want to show in terms of uh, you know, programming on the server for our application those things ranging from sending emails to indexing our site for search capabilities. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So basically, we are going to follow the migrate from ASP.NET Core 2.0 to 2.1 document here from Microsoft to of course upgrade our project here. There's a few things I want to do with it and requires us to be a 2.1. Um, so there's a link to this uh, article and uh, or a link to this article in mine. But so the first thing that I'm going to do and some of this has isn't honestly written in that article. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into so Solution Explorer here and we have this uh, there's a properties, it's basically a folder, and inside of it there's a launch.json, launch settings.json file. So I'm going to change a little bit here. Although I'm not going to use IIS, IIS Express anyway, I do like to uh, choose a port. So for 2.1, you know, Microsoft went the approach of, you know, wanting to have HTTPS everywhere all the time, which I was already doing, but I'll just pick a port here. Doesn't like I said. Doesn't really matter for that one. What matters is the um, area down here. This web UI one with the application URL. So this is uh, what the URL that will be used when I start the the project up. And uh, you know, basically, all I want to do is change that from HTTP, HTTP to HTTPS. You can change the port number. I don't really care what port it's being served from. And just save that. All right, so it's already open, but let's go ahead and close it. Back to the Solution Explorer here. And the next thing that we want to uh, change is the CS project file. So if you're using Visual Studio, you just right click on the name of the project, and one of the options inside there is the edit the uh, project file. If you're using, say, Visual Studio Code, the project file will just be shown in the directory there and you can just click on it. There's only actually a few changes that we need to make in here. First one, you know, target the framework. We want this to be 2.1 and we'll come down here. I guess they change this thing from all. We're not supposed to use all. We use app now. Version number, at least at the time that I'm doing this, is 2.1.2 and we have since I've used this project for other videos within this little series, there is also installed the spa services just to keep it up to date. The current one is 2.1.1. And apparently you can eliminate the you know, .NET CLI tool reference here and install things globally and such. I actually haven't checked what version number that could go up to, but I'm just going to leave it alone and just uh, save this. Once I've done the saving here, Visual Studio is going to kick off a, a package restore to update all the dependencies inside the, the project. Um, if you're not using Visual Studio and it doesn't do it automatically, you can just use the .NET restore command on the, the command line to, to update it. And so the next thing we want to adjust here is the program.cs file. I guess we don't actually have to change it. Let me go ahead and get rid of these extra ones here. We don't actually have to change it, um, but I guess they have a new way that they're suggesting us to, to do these things. And um, I was looking to see if there's, if I had accidentally already changed it because they're very similar, um, but I haven't already. So let me go ahead and what I'll do is just copy this thing in here to next to this. So they just modified a little bit on how to create everything. 
So what we're going to do is get rid of this and change that call just to the one we created. And I said, uh, you know, all this code is copied into the article um, that I made and the uh, link is in the description below so you can just copy and paste. I mean, it's not very interesting to me anyway, so we'll just make it to be the way that it is if you start a new project now. Now, if we go into the startup.cs file, there is at least one thing. Let me get rid of the extra ones we don't need. There is this one thing, browser link. Um, I never really use browser link anyway, but if you do use it, there is a package that you can install, uh, a browser link NuGet package if you wanted to keep this. Just to get rid of the a little error there, we're going to go ahead and delete that. And uh, just to keep things to be looking like, like I said, a new project would be if we started a new 2.1 project. What they're actually helping uh, or trying to help to do is to deal with uh, cookies. So we have a new cookie policy options object here. Normally I'll make that X, but let's stick with the article here. And uh, a new project would have options dot check consent needed and pass in the context. It'll tell you yes or no. And in this case, we just spit out true. And they also have also have options dot minimum same site policy and that's set to none. I guess that uh, brought in an import. So I guess, I think, yeah, that brought in an import for us. And that import was this one here is the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.HTTP uh, name, so our using statement there. Oops, semicolon. And semicolon. And the next thing that they do, and they have a post about this as well, and I have a link to it in the article is trying to come up with a way to be able to add new features and not break existing applications. And I guess the way that we're supposed to, or the way they're doing that is that on the add MVC, we now do set um, compatibility version and compatibility version. I'll just say, I guess I could do latest, but we'll two one is the one that we'll use here. And then that one should have brought in this using statement here using Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC. And I think that will do it for our startup. Oh no, uh, take that back. That'll do it for the configure services in the startup. We come now to the configure method. And like I said I've already deleted the browser link. But we're also supposed to use within the non-development side of this thing app.use hsts. So that's the strict transport transport security header gets added. And I mentioned when we were doing the changes to the launch file that um, they've gone to saying that to you know want to use uh, HTTPS all the time everywhere and to do that they've added a middleware that we can use which is the HTTPS redirection middleware so that'll redirect it for us we have the static files and then we can do the app and then there's a use cookie policy middleware that deals with uh, the cookies all right so now that takes care of the startup.cs file. And I never really paid attention to it, didn't realize it when I was just made this project. It didn't matter to me at all. But if we go into the pages folder, and I know you can't really read the Solution Explorer, but it, Visual Studio is not nice to adjust the size of the Chrome around it or whatever. The pages folder contains, of course, our layout.cshtml, right? So the page that we generally show for every um, for every page or wrapping everything and that's just located within the pages folder if you create a new project 
that thing is going to be re included in a folder called shared. So just to you know, keep things looking like it would be on any new project, I'll just move the layout folder into the into a shared folder that I just created. And uh, that article that I showed, I'll leave it up. The article here talks a lot about uh, well, Docker, but uh, also talks about where is it at? Identity authentication here. So they changed where authentication is located, you know, what URL it's usually served by, and you know where it's at now, and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, if you're using Identity in 2.0 and you want to update, yeah, I don't think you necessarily have to do this, but you can. Um, in that project that I created, I did not start with any authentication, um, so there's nothing for me to, to update from there. Now. Um, I am going to be using this project here in the future, here shortly for for a few different things, and uh, I want to make it easy to start up the thing. So if we go into the there's a package.json file that's in here from previous uh, videos and articles. One thing I want to do is to make it easier to start the server up. So I'm going to come in here to the scripts, and I'm going to create a new script, I'm going to call it watch, and in that we're going to use the .NET watch run command environment, spell it right, environment, and the environment that I want to use oops, is uh, development. That way now I can use this .NET watch or npm run watch and it'll run this command. I'm tired of typing out that it's supposed to be um, development. Let's go into here and just to make sure everything is working here. I'm doing, of course, testing everything out. Let's close it. And we'll open a new one. So we're in the Web UI here, so now npm run. See if it fails miserably. Yeah, something. Yeah, that's just previous from here. I need to update the. I've said previously, node SAS sometimes has a hissy fit and you have to reload it and such. But at least, uh, you know, we're starting. <laughs> to get that uh, application going. I'll do the update for that on the outside. It has nothing really to do with this project. Also inside of the article here, you can see what we'll uh, have is just a copy of the full CS project file and a copy of the full startup CS if you want to check it out. But uh, you know, this is just a, a brief video to get everything updated. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.